Hello everybody! In today's video I will show you a compressed and improved version of a popular video of mine, namely how to edit and save entries in an ALV list. Today I use two development environments, the ABAP development tools in Eclipse and the classic SE80. First I declare here some variables, some internal tables, some work areas in my new report. We need uh, some field cat variables and tables sb fly. This is the table I use for my example today. Next, I create a selection screen with a selection, selection screen block one and the select options is the care ID. It's a key column of this database table sb fly. Next, start of selection, then we get the data with a select star from SP fly into table IT SP fly where care ID in S care ID. This is the selection screen values. Next we create the field cat. First I declare a variable for the column numbers and then here we can set the tables we will want to display and we can set different settings or properties to these uh, columns. So first we I pick the care ID, then I will display the con ID. These are two key value uh, columns. So I set the key value with W field cat key is X or above true. Next I display the column city from and I set this column to edit. So I can, this column is editable and I can change the values in this column. And last the column city 2. Then we display the ALV grid. First I copy the values of the internal table SB fly to another internal table SB fly CP. CP stands here for compare. So then I set the layout to Zebra. So for better reading and I set the form for the GUI status and the form for the user command. First we create the form GUI status called F status set and here we set a standard GUI status. We copy this GUI status later in this video. Then the form user command. Here we catch the event from the ALV grid. For example, if we press the button save and I set some other parameters, refresh, row stable and column stable. And then we create the form save data. So here we create another work areas. And in this form, we loop over the table ITSP fly and we write the single records in a work area and we compare this work area with the other internal table ITSP fly CP. And if we detect here a change, then we modify the database table SP fly from the work area SP fly TMP. Okay. So next we will uh, copy the GUI status, the standard GUI status we need for this program. We see here my program and we need the GUI status. So we scroll down here, we call the GUI status called standard. And for this, I open an SAP GUI window that type here in the transaction SE80 and here we open the function group called KKBL. We scroll down to the GUI status folder and here we have a standard GUI status. It's the standard for general list output. Right mouse click, copy and we copy this GUI status to our program. So here we type in the name of our program. It's uh, set ALV. Uh, 
volume 2. So set a we edit save volume 2. Click on copy. Copy. And then we go here to program. Again, here we type in the name of our program. Set LV volume two. And here we see the new created GUI status with a standard GUI status in it, not activated now. So we go back and we have to copy our function code. It's here, it's and data safe. So copy this function code. We go back to our GUI status. So let's check the application toolbar, menu bar, and the function keys. And here we can paste in the function code. But first we have to go in the edit mode. So we click on edit mode here. And then we can paste the function code and data save. So we click on save and activate. And next we go back in Eclipse and we refresh here our program. Yes, now we have the new folder GUI status. Then let's open this GUI status to check if our changes are here. Yes, we see standard toolbar data save function code is here. So to run this program, we open an SAP GUI window again. And here we open the transaction SE38 and we call our program. So let's display the code and run the program. So we go on here and we see here the editable column city from. And now let's change the entry with San Francisco. Let's add some numbers here and we click on save. Okay, then we go back and we call the report again. And we see our changes are here. So now let's use the selection screen for, for example, just the Lufthansa entries. And let's add here some numbers to New York. Click on spay, uh, save. And we call the report again. And we see the changes are stored. So now let's check the database table. We call the transaction SE11. We call the database table SB fly. Click on display and let's browse the records here. And we see the changes have been written to the database here. So that works. And for a better understanding, we can check the debugger. We can check the program in the debugger. So let's uh, set a breakpoint here. So we set the breakpoint in the form save data on the loop statement. Then we run the program. And now let's do some changes. For example, here, New York, we add here the numbers three, Frankfurt four and Rome five. So we have three record records changed. Okay, now we are in the debugging mode and double click on the internal table SB fly. If we check here the records, we see here our changes. Then we go back and we double click on the internal table SB fly CP for compare. Here are no changes because these are the initial records. And then we go on and we set the we set another breakpoint uh, after the if clause. So if there is a change detected, and so double click on work area SB fly and work area SB fly CP. We see here the changed record and here we have no changed, no change. 
so we have here a record what we write to the database and we do this with modify sp fly command and all records we have what we have changed are stored in the internal table it changes so we see if we go on here in the debugger the records are increasing in this table so let's check this double click on the internal table it changes and here are our changed records so we go on here and we see here our changes are visible so that works so we go back we execute this report again we see our changes we have made and we see the same um, in the database in the transaction se11 for example so we display this again we browse the records here and here are our changes so you see that is an easy and simple way to create an editable alv grid in sap yes in the end as always don't forget to subscribe give me a thumbs up and write something in the comments take care and see you in the next video